Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to make cute little bags like the ones that you can see here. These can be used for crafty projects. They are great for, for example, making cards or scrapbooking pages. Um, you can put things inside here. Uh, they are great for your children's dolls or for these dolls that we adults like. For example, Latte Yellows, Pookie Fees, Barbies, Blythe Dolls, um, Pulip Dolls. And as you can see here, I have my doll. She is wants to say hi. Her name is Sonali and she's a Latte Yellow Sissy. And she has her teddy bear there keeping her company. And these are all her little bags. So she wants them back. So let me first clear my table and then I'll come back and show you how to make this incredibly easy to make bag. This is suitable even for beginners. Okay, so let's start making our little bags. And in order for you to make this bag, you need to have some measurements. I did not make a pattern for you to download because I really think this is so easy that you don't even need to download a pattern. You can make this pattern yourself. And here you can see the measurements. And first I'm going to show you this in centimeters. Here are the measurements. Please pause this video if you want to study them further. So nine centimeters long, four and a half centimeters wide. No seam allow allowances are included. You need to cut one of these. And here on the other side, these are approximate inches because inches are harder to put into smaller measurements. So these are approximate. 3.5 inches tall and 1.7 inches wide. And then you need to cut the handles. And here is the handle pattern. It's also 9 centimeters long, but it's 2 centimeters wide. And you need to cut two of these. Also, no seam allowance is allowed here, but you really don't need them for this. And the same in inches. 3.5 inches um, long or tall and 1.8 inches wide. I will include two links in my description box down below there where you can actually print uh, metric, metric uh, rulers online because I know that, for example, I have almost all my measurements in millimeters and centi centimeters because that's what I use here in Europe. So you can print these online. You can print like a paper ruler. So I'll put some links in the description box for you if you want to print out some of those rulers. Okay, so you need to have these. And obviously you need to have some fabric. Here I have some fabric. This is actually a fabric scrap. I've made a dress with this. This is a dress pattern that I've cut out of this actually for Sonali. And um, you need to have fabric that has a small print. Obviously, because you're going to make a small bag, if it has a huge print, you probably can't even see the print. Of course, if you make, um, if you have fabric that is only one color, then that's okay. And of course, you can make this with bigger patterns too, but smaller patterns, they look better here. And this particular fabric, if anyone is interested, is very cute. This is from, from uh, littletrimmings.com. It's a UK-based company. And um, let's start out by turning this to the wrong side. So the right side is here, wrong side is here. And cutting our main piece. Now it says no seam allowances are here and they really aren't here. The reason is that I tend to craft with, I eyeball a lot of things. You know, I don't like exact measurements and that's why I never measure my seam allowances. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this design onto this fabric and then I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to add the seam allowances as I cut. But let me first um, draw this and I'm drawing this with a laundry marker which is a non-permanent marker for fabrics and this will fade with time or also with touch. So I need to be careful um, touching it. So I'm just going to draw here around. Hopefully you can see. I need to switch my hands quite a bit here. So let me do the drawing there. One more line. There we go. And there we can see my pattern. 
and now I need to cut it and this is the point where you would add the seam allowances you really do need seam allowances so please don't think that you don't need them you do need them it's just that I never measure those first of all let me cut this off from this bigger piece of fabric for the simple reason that it's easier for me to cut this on camera if I don't have this big fabric blob there okay so in order to make the seam allowances you can draw them if you like to measure things then please do I would add about half a centimeter or one centimeter of seam allowance here again I'm using centimeters because that that's what I'm used to but I don't do that I simply eyeball it so <clears throat> I never measure like I've said a million times already okay I'm trying to cut this here on camera hope you can see so I just cut it like a half a centimeter um, away from the edge and of course you need a good pair of fabric scissors to cut the fabric okay there is our first pattern and the next thing that you need to do is to cut two pieces of these these are the handles and I'm gonna do that but I'm gonna do that off camera to save a little bit of your time uh, however just please remember when I when I um, cut this out I'm not gonna add any seam allowance for these they don't need seam allowance because they are already uh, kind of calculated in there so no seam allowances for these so I'm gonna cut two of these now and then I'll come so back. here are our pieces for the bag Two handles and the bag itself. I'm gonna take the handles off for a moment and I'm going to show you how you will prep this for sewing. So as you can see my lines have they have faded quite a bit but I can still see them and the first thing you will need to do with this is these shorter ends here you will turn them from the right side to the wrong side. So along this line here Turn it like this and pin it. Um, I just want to say here that this is a very simple bag and if you want to, you can always make this um, more refined. You can, for example, um, use zigzag, zigzag for, the, for the seams and all that. But since this is not going to be really used per se uh, as a bag, so that's why I, I'm doing this in a very simple way. So I'm just going to leave the seams as they are. I'm not going to do any zigzagging there with the seams or anything like that. But like I said, you can always do that if you want to. So turning them here to the wrong side from the right side and just pinning them. Like that. Okay, then I'm going to put that aside for a moment and take my handles. And now I want to measure, I want to men mention here about the handles that if you want to, you can also use um, ribbon as handles. Here's the green bag that I made and as you can see I used some lace there as handles. And also, um, Sonali took one of the bags, here you can see. These are ribbons. She's holding onto the bag, but these are also ribbons. So you can use ribbons here too, if you want to. But first, um, next we need to prep these. And the way we prep these, this takes just a little bit of um, handwork here. Turn a little less than a half to the wrong side from both ends so that they meet in the middle. Approximately, you want them to meet in the middle. And then you want to turn that like this. So you have like a little sandwich like this. But this gives you a very nice, neat um, handle here. And then I'm going to pin this. I'm going to do one here on camera. And then the other, I'm just going to do off camera to make it a little bit quicker here. Okay, so pinning this. And once you have started it, you can see that it almost starts folding by itself. So it's going to be much easier to do once you get the, the start, the beginning first. So 
Oh, there we go. <clears throat> and the last bit here. Is that fabric. We don't want to become a handle. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have a little bit of voice problems again, so I'm clearing my throat a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. So there's one handle done. As you can see, there's the fold. So do the other one like this too, and then I'll come back to show you how we will continue. Okay, I'm here by my sewing machine. And I've got all my three pieces with me and we're going to start off with the handles. So what you need to do is just sew a simple straight stitch all along here. And as you can see, I've already taken off the first pin because I'm starting from here. And I always like to go a couple of times back and forth here at the end, but that's not absolutely necessary because we're going to attach this to this bigger piece. So let me sew both of these handles and then come back to show you how we will continue. Here are the handles all sewn. And the next part then is to sew these again with a straight stitch. However, at this point you can attach your handles if you want to. I prefer to sew them on by hand, but if you don't like hand sewing, you can put your handles in already. What you would do is you would put them like this and pin them here. Obviously you want to make sure that you put them at equal distances from the edge like this pin them together or at, not pin them, them together but pin them to this bottom piece and then um, sew right here the reason why I don't do that is let me show you this is a very small piece and this is a very small piece now when I put this in here and if I pin it, I will have to take the pin off pretty soon after I start sewing because otherwise I will be ruining my, my needle because it will hit this pin. So I need to take this pin off and it's really hard, I found, to keep this in place without the pin. So when you're sewing, it will start going this way or this way and then you will have a completely lopsided um, bag or a lopsided handle. That's why I don't really like doing that because they never, I never get them to go so beautifully at the exact same spots as I do when I hand sew them. So that's why I'm not doing that here, but you can do it if you want to. So let me sew these together and then I'll come back. Okay then, so now I have sewn these together and the next thing then is to put the right sides together and line up the top like this and attach it with your pin here from the edge and you probably still can see the very faint line there that I have. You want to line up the top line up the top there we go so what you will need to do now is you will need to um, sew along these barely visible lines here. And obviously you don't have to sew the bottom. You just have to sew these two from here to here and from here to here. So let me do that. So the next step then is to cut off any of this extra seam that you might have here. This is not absolutely necessarily, but I like to do that because um, it takes away any bulkiness that this might have. And I like to cut the edge diagonally like this. Helps with the um, helps with the corners to push them out. And um, then let me take off any extra seam from there. And you can do this if you have very carefully going back and forth here a couple of times so that's when it's safe to do this okay so next thing then is to mark the spots where you will put your handles like this and you can sew them like this on to the wrong side however what i like to do is i like to sew them from the right side so you can do whichever one you choose 
So let me turn this to the right side. And in order to push the corners out, you want to have something that's not entirely sharp, like this. This is a, a pen that um, has, uh, what do you call that? Oh, I've forgotten that. You know, the thing that you write like a pencil. Anyway, whatever it is, <laughs> um, you put like these thin pieces of that thing here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing my words. But anyway, as you can see, this is not entirely sharp. I can't use my scissors because they are too sharp. They would poke holes here. So anyway, let's forget what I was mumbling about this thing and just push out the corners. Like a lead or lead. Lead. I think I mean lead. Anyway, well, I'm sure you all know what I mean. <laughs> so anyway, here is the bag now, but it's still lacking the handles. And like I said, if you soak them on as you were sewing these, then they, your bag is ready but mine still is not. And what I like to do is I eyeball this again. See, I'm a big eyeballer. What I do is I eyeball an approximate distance from the edge here, and then I start sewing on my, my um, handle, and then I sew the other piece right at the, the same spot there. And um, let me take my needle and I'll show you how I do the sewing. Okay, so let's start sewing. I have threaded my needle. I'm using just cream colored, um, very simple sewing thread. And I've placed the other end of one of my handles here, placed it on a spot I like, and I'm holding tight to it. And what I'm doing is to hide the knot because my knots are always huge, as you can see here. I make huge knots. So I go in between this um, handle and the back and just make sure you don't get your finger and then I just um, push through and the reason for this is to hide the knot to put it underneath there this time my knot is so huge though I don't know if I can handle it <laughs> there we go you can still fiddle with this because it's not attached at all okay so then I start doing a simple cross, like cross like this. So I go in, let's say from here, and now obviously through both the handle and the, the bag, come out from there and um, make a sort of like a little cross. And this is, this is very, very sometimes um, you need to be careful so that you don't stitch your fingers. I've done that. It's not nice. <laughs> so there we have one half of the, um, you probably can't see it there, but we have like one half of a cross. And I have to say though, that I'm not very particular about this. I don't really care if it looks like a beautiful cross or not. I have to say, I really don't care about that because I often put something in there that I hide it, hide it with, so you can hide it with something. For example, in here, let me show you. You can put a fringe in there, so you really can't see it in here. You can see what it looks like when it's done. So it's really not a perfect, like look at that one. It's not a perfect cross, but you know, no, well, there you can see it. But it works for me, and I, and I don't think it looks that horrible. So I keep doing this. I keep going in this same pattern. Let's see if you can see. No, you can't really see it from there. But I keep going in the same pattern for like maybe 10 times to see that it's securely attached. And then I take this other end here and I attach it to the very same spot or the same distance from the edge. And then I do the same with the other um, handle here. So let me finish this and then I'll come back to show you my finish. Okay, part. so I have finished making the bag, but unfortunately Sonali snatched the bag immediately. You can see she's really holding on to it. But there it is. I added a little pink trim and then I added two blue buttons there. I actually glued those on. You can also sew them if you want to. And I'm really 
thinking maybe I could just pull this off from her if I give her this cute bag where her teddy bear is inside the bag. So maybe she would give this to me if I give her that other other bag. So it might be that she would give it to me. She doesn't look happy, but let's try it this way. Okay, so here's the bag. You can put things inside. So yeah, you can put any kind of embellishments on this that you want. So if you have any questions about making this, please leave a comment and I will reply your comment. And um, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And thank you so much for watching this. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.